Thanks for joining us today, everybody. Level M Diecast, bringing some green light action today. We're working on getting caught up on a lot of stuff. Great Outdoors series number three. This is the series with the tents and stuff. Uh, been pretty relatively successful, I'd say. I mean, usually uh, if things don't pan out all that well, they usually don't get to a series three, but usually one and two usually drop. This is a sealed case, so... Hopefully we do not grab a greenie, but uh, always a possibility. Um, I would prefer not to buy or not to purchase or acquire a greenie just because we cut these open. But uh, if we get one, then so be it. So we do collect the whole series here. So we'll go ahead and cut the tape. Get that done there. See what we got going on here. I don't remember everything that's in. Uh, this particular series so we're just going to go go through these as a team here first one up 1992 jeep cherokee laredo in green that one looks fantastic no that's not a greenie um but it's super super cool in green existing casting with the uh, tent so nothing new with the tent so i'm gonna crack all these open don't worry we're just gonna get them out to start with 1986 gmc sierra classic this one is in a really nice brown uh, with kind of a, um, kind of a, I don't know, kind of a clay color, reddish clay color tent in the back. Again, not a new casting on the tents either. Uh, next one up, uh, 1996 Ford Bronco XLT. Really cool casting, really cool casting. I only have a couple of these castings. I don't have them all. But really, really cool. This is the same tent as the first one we looked at. Just kind of decoed up a little bit different, which I think is kind of cool. Next one up, 83 Chevrolet C20 Silverado. So pretty much the same thing as that GMC truck with the same molding for the tent. But that looks pretty cool as well. Of course, different colors because, of course, could have different colors. Next one up, 1969 Nissan Patrol 60. This one in baby blue looks absolutely fantastic. Another new style, or it's not new to this series, but just a, a different tent. There's several different tents. I think there's like three or four different tents uh, total between the mix. And then the last one in the mix, no green machines. Thank goodness. 1978 Volkswagen Type 2, which looks fantastic. Get our box out of here. Throw that to the side. We'll just get right into it. We will start with that 78 Volkswagen Type 2. The clamshells are pretty thick, pretty average. We've had a couple of clamshells here and there that have been relatively light. So, very interesting. So, in case you guys wanted to see the back, that's all it shows on the back. So, nothing... Nothing fancy. There's the barcode DEETS. Should you need the barcode DEETS. So we'll take our van out. The tent piece. Oof, a little tight in there. Um, and then the ladder. So the ladder is... Got a piece of... Uh, like tape over it. Let's see if we can get it to... Uh, Come up a little bit. There we go. Get the ladder popped out of there. There we go. Comes with a little tiny ladder. They all do. It is just solid plastic. Um, it is very, very fragile. When I did uh, Series 1 unboxing, I broke one of the ladders. So nothing new there. This is your 78 Volkswagen. This thing is absolutely fantastic. I love the two-tone. Nice Volkswagen wheels with hubcaps on there. Looks good. See, there is a little bit of that residue that uh, green light is known for all over the side of the model. But uh, you don't see it unless you have a good glare to it. So I guess it's not as bad. Uh, side mirrors are molded into the casting. Volkswagen symbol on the front. Lens headlights. Very, very nice details. No opening features whatsoever. But it is, you know, it's a really good model. Details on the back, tail lights are done up very good. Looks good. No print for the plate. So pretty pretty common here. Uh, take a look at the base deets. See, there is a number right there on the top. 657 is the number. 
So starting it off with a very low number, so that's super cool. So the way these works, this is your uh, tent. This is just uh, two pieces of plastic molded, uh, glued together, I should say, molded separately, silver base, and then, of course, the tent on the top. The, you know, moldings are done pretty good. They look pretty good. Uh, essentially, this is where you would climb up to get in the ladder. There is two little posts down here. There's two posts drilled in the top of the model. Slide the posts down in there. Some of them are tight. Some of them are not. But that is how it sits in there. And then, of course, you would take your ladder to the front section right here. And then the ladder just goes right in the little notch. Uh, just like that. And then you set it on the ground. See, this one does not reach. So the ladder doesn't actually reach uh, the tent to put the ladder there anyways. So, see, it's quite short, unfortunately, so it doesn't actually reach. That's a bit of a bummer. It's so fragile, so hard to hold this ladder. So, so that is essentially where the ladder would sit, and you can see how far off from the ground it is. It's about half the length of the tire, so that's not a very good start, uh, that's for sure. So, set that guy to the side. All right, next one we'll take a look at, 1969 Nissan Patrol 60. This one looks uh, pretty good in baby blue. Definitely a far departure from what we normally get for the Nissan Patrol. Uh, not a very, uh, probably not a very period correct color, um, but still looks good. Still like it a lot. So we'll slide our Patrol out. Patrol comes out there very nicely. Pull the tent out, mold it in there the exact same way as the last one because it is the same tent. So get the tent out of there. This one does not have tape holding the ladder in there, so we'll just pop the ladder out. Kind of an interesting change there. This is the exact same tent. This is just one solid color on the top with the dark blue or dark ur blue. It's still silver base on this one as well. As far as the model concerned, this one looks fantastic. I really like the uh, BF Goodrich tire print on there. Silver hubs on there looks absolutely fantastic. No side mirrors for this particular casting. Um, but I really, really like it. Looks good. Details up front look very, very good. Prints and everything like that. Deets on this side does say Nissan Patrol on there. Right there on the quarter panel, which is very nice. Spare tire on the back. A little bit of print. It says Patrol right there. This does have a removable top, so top comes off very, very nicely. A couple benches in the back, left-hand drive for this one. There's some stick shift detail in there. Looks pretty good. Details on the base are very good as well. Number 40, wow, that's a really low number. We're getting some really, really low numbers, so that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, really low number. Uh, this one looks kind of cool. It's uh, basically a separate chassis. Um, on the base here, which is a very interesting design. It's not necessarily meant to be like a chassis separate. Um, it's just kind of the way it's designed, but I think it looks good, makes good detail to it. So we'll put the top back on so that we can put the um, tent on there. You see there is two holes drilled in the top. Sorry about that. Two holes drilled in the top. This one likely won't uh, reach either. So this one, the holes are pretty good. So there you go. You put that on there. And then the tent, um, again, will go on the back. So we'll see if this one will actually reach. See if this one's too tall. See, this one, of course, is too tall to reach as well. Now, the thing is, is some of these have some frictions. You see that some of them have some friction to sit in there, but most of them don't have that friction. Um, that's been that way since Series 1, so that's nothing new. But you can see how far off of the ground that is. It's it's quite dramatic, but still looks kind of cool. So those two are the same tent, by the way. Moving on to a new style of tent. 1983 Chevy C20 Silverado. This one looks kind of cool. Uh, got some steelies up on this one. This one doesn't require like any assembly. And the good thing about this tent is there's no holes or nothing drilled in the model. So that's a good thing. So we'll slide our Sylvie. So it does have a rubber band just to hold the tent on the back. Really don't see what the point of that is. It's in a pretty tight blister, so it's not going nowhere. 
but maybe they put that in there so that you could keep it on there in your own collection. So we'll take the tent off, take a look at that in just a second. There is our Sylvie. I really, really like the Steelies in kind of a primer gray kind of color. Looks awesome. Really cool details for that. Very good prints on the front. See, there's a nice uh, big scratch right there on the windshield. So good old quality for green light. It's not broken, just uh, scratched up pretty significantly. So nothing new for green light, like I said. Um, details look good. I like the color. It's kind of a kind of a kind of a burgundy brown. Um, looks looks good. It's a uh, it's appropriate. Taking a look at the base deets, or I'm sorry, the uh, details on the back. Looks like there's a bumper sticker on there. Oh my goodness, it's so small. Can't even read. There is some type of print there. I can't even read what that's supposed to be. I don't know if that's supposed to be a bumper sticker or what that is. I'm trying to get some angles here. It's just too small. I can't get in there to see exactly what it is. Maybe I have to take a magnifying glass off to that, off the camera maybe. But so is Silverado, I'm sorry, it says uh, Chevrolet in the back. I do apologize. No, no lens lights on this one. It's all printed up, but that looks okay. Nothing in the bed. Tailgate doesn't open. Hood doesn't open. May look like the hood opens, but they don't. A base Dietz. There is the base Dietz. This one is also a low number. That one is 878. So we're getting some pretty good low numbers here. This is the tent. I do like this tent. Looks pretty cool. Hangs off the back. It would simulate that the uh, tailgate is down, even though the tailgate's not. That's essentially what it would be doing. There's a piece in there to cover up the hole in the bottom. See, the uh, plastic is a completely different color than what's printed. It is all painted with two shades of gray. This literally just sits right in the bed. Um, this will fit... Um, Maybe, maybe some of the other longer bed trucks, uh, but it's pretty much specifically made for the Chevy bed. You see the width and stuff like that on there looks pretty good. So it's not too shabby. I mean, it's definitely something you might see at the campsite. All right, moving on to one that is definitely more involved. 1996 Ford Bronco XLT. This casting is just ridiculously cool. Uh, Greenlight did a enormously good job on this casting. Um, there's been quite a few releases for it so far, uh, but this one is fantastic and just a stock XLT Deco. Unfortunately, you will have some holes drilled on the top of it for the tent, but uh, that's just the way it is. So we'll slide out our 96 Ford Bronco. Does have an opening top, obviously, is removable canopy on it. Uh, different style of tent for this one than we've seen thus far. Uh, no um tape for this one for the ladder either so we'll take that there is our xlt this one looks fantastic with the wheels some nice factory ford wheels looks really really good it says bronco on the side i love the kind of um kind of the cream and white two-tone it looks really really good looks fantastic from head on the print for the headlight is kind of a back set so i've often complained about uh prints being on the outside of headlights for green lights it looks really really good when you look at it like this because the white is printed behind the plastic but the problem is when you see it from the side you can see the grill and pieces and stuff like that um and it just it doesn't look very good so green light's gonna have to figure out some kind of compromise there this particular one has a little bit of plate detail on the front although you can't read that whatsoever so hopefully that'll be on the back and we can check it out. This does have a spare tire, which is integrated. Um, it is a extra piece. Kind of hard to see that. So you see there is an actual piece attached to the back. Um, it doesn't open or move or anything, but it is actually a part attached to the uh, back of the casting, which is really nice. A lot of times they will print the arms on there and then add the spare tire. Uh, no uh, license plate in the back. So... There is just a license plate in the front. That's really interesting that they put a license plate in the front, but nothing in the back. This does have an opening top. You know it doesn't hinge like that. There's a piece of tape on there. So there's your tape. 
We'll take the tape off, move the tape to the side. There is the back of the Bronco. It does have just a single bench. This bench is in there a little bit crooked. You can see it is what it is. It's green light quality. It is just glued into the bottom. You can see the glue residue there at the bottom, but it looks good. I do like it with the top off. That looks very, very cool. So then, of course, with the top on, it looks even cooler. Uh, it kind of notches left to right, but not really front to back. So basically, it just it pretty much just sits on there. As far as the tent goes, there is our tent. This is uh, one of those ones that you would fold the whole tent down in here, and then this would close down, um, and it would be like a roof-mounted tent, and you would just pop it up. Really, really cool tents. Um, very expensive, but very, very cool. So this one would just sit off to the side. See on this one, the holes are drilled quite off to one side. That is intentional. So that way when you put this in there, it gives the better illusion that if you were to close this down, um, it would be more of a roof mounted accessory. So this one has a tiny little notch in the bottom. This ladder is different. This ladder is wider. This ladder is also designed to be a little bit of an angle. So we'll see kind of which direction it should go in there. Potentially out to the side. There we go. There's a little bit of friction in there, hopefully enough to hold it. So I can set it down. So there you go. That one looks pretty good. That one looks pretty good. The ladder actually touches the ground. Some of it is the weight of the um, tent because it does kind of hang off the side a lot. But that one looks pretty good. That one looks pretty good. I do like that one. All right, moving on to the next one. 1986 GMC Sierra Classic 1500. Basically the GMC version of the Silverado we already looked at. Just in different colors. Uh, Greenlight does this all the time. This is nothing new. Uh, this helps reduce the cost of the assortments uh, significantly. And, um, you know, technically, technically you get a different truck. But, so we'll take the little rubber band that's on this piece here in the back, potentially. There we go. So just showing you the uh, tent real quick. It is kind of a kind of a reddish kind of clay color. And then there is just brown for the door. That is supposed to be the door, you know, how you would climb into the tent. But the truck by itself looks fantastic. I really, really like this metallic brown. Looks fantastic. The wheels are awesome. Those steelies from the GM stable. Um, I really, really like those. This one has some Goodyear Wranglers on it. So that's super, super cool. Something we didn't get on the other truck. Does say GMC in the bed there in black. It's really difficult to read because it's, you know, contrasts with the uh, brown parent. It looks... This color is fantastic. I mean, look at this color. It looks really good. I really like this brown a lot. This truck's really nice, actually. Even without the tent, it's really nice. There is the deets on the front. All kinds of chrome, of course. It does say GMC. Very good details. Green light looking pretty fancy. Looking at the base deets on this one, I just remembered. I don't think we looked at the number on that one. We did not look at the number on that one, so we'll have to... We'll have to pull that one up. This one is, looks like 668 potentially. So another really, really low number. So I must have got lucky from the vendor I bought these from. And uh, they must have had a pretty good low number. Let's see if I can pull this guy up without all the things falling apart. The model, there we go. The number 668. So... I think that was the other number too. So kind of cool, kind of matching numbers or 868. I think that was it's one of those numbers. All right. Last one we're going to take a look at is the 1992 Jeep Grand Cherokee or just cheap Cherokee Laredo, not grand Cherokee, just the regular Laredo uh, in green. I think this one might be, might be my favorite. Um, I really, really like this Jeep casting a lot. Um, definitely one of my my more favorite um, castings from green light. It's not my favorite casting. You guys know that's the Tahoe. Definitely the Tahoe. So this is the same tent that the Bronco uses. This guy also doesn't have tape for the ladder. So we'll just pop that out. Same tent here. This one looks a little bit better because you get a lot of contrasting colors. So you can see 
there would be a flap there, another flap here, and then a little bit of flap there. And of course the top part in black, which is a separate piece, and then just the base. This is our Jeep. This looks fantastic in this green. It's like a, a little bit of a metallic green. Looks really, really good. The details on this Jeep have always been very good. See all that nice prints, all that nice uh, piece work and what, like all that good stuff. It just, oh, man, the grill lines especially. Look how crisp they are. This one is actually really, really, really good. Uh, we've had some quality issues, but this one is really good. Uh, this guy also gets some Goodyear Wranglers, which is very fitting for a Jeep. Really like the details. Does say uh, 4x4 on the quarter panel there, and then Cherokee there on the side. Details on the back. It does say uh, 4.0 liter with an E, which is ridiculous, but it does. Uh, top is drilled, of course, for the two pins for the uh, tent. And then taking a look at the base deets here, there is the number up at the top. Looks like 802. Looks like maybe 802. So very, very impressive. I think all of the models were under uh, 1,000 for the number. This one um, is going to be a little tight. I can tell you right now, just, just looking at the curvature of the top of the casting. Oof, there we go. Oh, yeah, I, I knew this was going to happen. The casting has got a curve to it. So even if you're going down straight, um, there tends to be a little bit of variance in there, which is where we're having the problem with here. You see, it looks like the holes line up. It looks like they go into there. But as far as getting that second one down in there, and of course it's plastic, so you got to be really careful. It's, it's, it's very, very tight. So I'm not going to force it in there, unfortunately, because I don't want to break it. But uh, this is what it would look like. And you can see this actually has tons and tons of space for the ladder because this is a smaller casting. Um, but that one looks kind of cool. I don't know if I can get that to display real quick. We can certainly give it a shot. Get this to slide in that little spot. There we go. So there's your, there's your Jeep. A little off camera. Get that guy on camera. Get this guy over here. Got kind of back there. Kind of give it a little bit of stance. And this is the problem you guys are going to have with uh, this particular line of uh, products from Greenlight. They're not perfect. They're pretty good, but they're not perfect. There's some issues. Um, if you put them on display and you're never going to touch them again and you want them to be permanent, you can maybe put a little bit of piece of... Uh, Super glue or something like that for the ladder, but uh, I certainly wouldn't glue the tent to the model itself. But there you go. That is Greenlight Great Outdoors Series 3. Still another good set, another good mixture. Um, hopefully Series 4 will bring us some new tents, uh, maybe some castings we haven't seen yet. Something different would be nice. Um, but for now, I think they are a very, very good mix. So drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about those. Tons more Greenlight stuff coming. Definitely more green light stuff coming. So we're going to roll out. Appreciate every single one of you. Level in Diecast. Peace.